This is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for joining us. Topping our news today at noon, Tropical Storm Emily is on the move this hour after surprising the Gulf Coast yesterday morning. Some areas in central Florida got as much as eight inches of rain, prompting the governor to declare a state of emergency. There was also damage here on the Sun Coast. ABC's Elizabeth Herr has the latest. Torrential rain and gusty winds blowing up to 45 miles per hour, so dangerous the Sunshine Skyway Bridge shut down by authorities. <laughs> Officials not taking any chances with crews keeping busy, responding to close call after close call, including this scene in Tampa, where a tractor trailer was left dangling over a highway overpass. <laughs> And these two brothers safely rescued after their fishing boat's engine died. The current could have taken them out. There's low visibility. There are no other boats out. Uh, so it could have ended in tragedy. In Fort Myers, this was the roof of this hotel. And it just happened fast and it blew and it blew and things were toppling. Across Florida, so many saying they were caught off guard by Tropical Storm Emily, flooding streets, toppling trees, and knocking out power to nearly 18,000 homes and businesses at its peak. This one, they downplayed, and I've never seen anything worse. It blew the transformers up on the pole back there and across the street. That was pretty serious. The governor, declaring a state of emergency, urged residents to stay alert. It's very important that every family get prepared on the front end. And today, forecasters say what's left of Emily is moving north into the Atlantic Ocean and the new concern now, rip current dangers from Florida all the way up to Georgia. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. Storm causing roof damage to some Bradenton apartment buildings. Four Oakmead apartment buildings on 13th Avenue East in Bradenton getting the full force of the storm. Heavy wind and rain from the storm damaged the roofs of the buildings and the ceilings then of the apartments. The buildings were in the process of being re-roofed. Work crews spent the afternoon yesterday putting on blue tarps to prevent any further water damage and then drying out those units. We've got um, three units that had some of their ceiling or part of their ceiling come down in the unit. Um, we also have um, the other units are on the second floors. All were affected. I'm sad. They lost a lot of property, a lot of personal items, and you know it's low-income housing and some of them couldn't afford renter's insurance, so all their personal property that got damaged, how are they going to get reimbursed for that? One of the residents says she suffered minor injuries. The Red Cross was on the scene to help those affected. Repairs to the building should be finished with it within a couple of days. And what a difference a day makes on Sarasota's Bayfront 24 hours after Emily's wind tossed these small boats around. Sunshine and calm waters returned to the waterfront this morning. Not only is this welcome relief to recreational boaters, it's also important for those who make their living on the water. The operations manager of the LaBarge Cruise says they lost several thousand dollars yesterday by not being able to leave the dock. To be shut down all day with the weather due to the, the severity of the weather to pop up really fast. Uh, we ended up being closed all day. You know, people wanted to go out in the water, plus we wouldn't think it would be safe anyways. LaBarge Cruise is just one of several companies that make a living on the Sarasota Bayfront. And new this afternoon, Moat Marine Lab's Turtle Conservation Program is looking at the storm's impact on sea turtle nesting along our area beaches. Moat Marine scientists are documenting which nest are nests are present, reposting marking stakes if they've been washed away, and collecting data about current nests from Venice north to Longboat Key. Moat is asking beachgoers to not interfere with any nests that may have standing water above them, and exposed eggs should be left alone and reported to Moat Sea Turtle Conservation Program. Boat Marine officials say it will likely take about a week before final numbers are released on the impact of the storm on those nests. And let's get a check now on our weather today, which is so, so different and so welcomed, I think, to everyone. On the I think coast. so. Yeah. yeah, what a difference a day makes. Yeah. We have some beautiful blue sky out there right now, kind of a... Kind of as a, uh, a benefit of having had Emily, actually, kind of drawing down that drier air on yeah. the backside of the storm. That often happens in storms. Uh, you get some nice clearing right after the storm passes by. And that's what we got today. Low rain chances. Take a look at the uh, Van Wezel webcam put into motion. Started off the day with blue sky and 
We certainly have it now. There are some showers way out in Gulf waters. There's a, uh, a pool of moisture out there which will be pushed in this direction by a wind shift later in the day today. Uh, but for the current forecast, I think we're on track for a relatively rain-free day. There may be a shower or two that pops up during the maximum heating of the uh, afternoon. But for the most part, most of us will not see rain today. We'll have a chance to dry out under copious amounts of sunshine. Forecast calling for about a 20% chance of a shower today. And a daytime high that tops out in the low 90s to near 90. And slightly lower relative humidity. That lasts a day. And then we start to see the humidity and the moisture return to the sun coast. We'll talk about that coming up in a few, Scott. Thank you. A new era beginning this week at the White House. New Chief of Staff John Kelly is now in charge after another shakeup in the administration's communications office. ABC's Emily Rao has the latest now from Washington. Already a crisis for the new White House Chief of Staff John Kelly. ABC News confirming President Trump personally dictated the misleading initial statement released by Don Jr. to the New York Times that the meeting he, Jared Kushner, and former campaign chairman Paul Manafort had with a number of Russians was about adoptions and was not a campaign issue at the time. The president didn't sign off on, on anything. He was coming back from the G20. The president wasn't involved in that. Trump's legal team then denying the president had any involvement, but sources for ABC and the Washington Post refute that. Don Jr. also later admitting the meeting was campaign related and he agreed to take it after being promised dirt on Hillary Clinton. What's significant about this story is it shows the president is willing to micromanage the Russia investigation response and he's also willing apparently to directly mislead the American people. Today, the president's lawyer telling ABC News about that new report, quote, apart from being of no consequence, the characterizations are misinformed, inaccurate, and not pertinent. All eyes now on the West Wing and President Trump's new right-hand man. His last big hire lasting less than two weeks. The team still reeling after the oustings of Sean Spicer, Reince Priebus, and Anthony Scaramucci, but now hoping to turn the page with General Kelly in command. I predict that uh, General Kelly will go down in terms of the position of chief of staff one of the great ever. President Trump showing no signs he plans to adjust his social media behavior, tweeting on Tuesday, only the fake news media and Trump enemies want me to stop using social media. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, two men are arrested for illegal dumping in an Englewood neighborhood. Charlotte County Sheriff's deputies say they charged 22-year-old Christian Cruz and 49-year-old Wade and Patton with littering more than 500 pounds of commercial waste. Deputies say someone spotted the two with a trailer full of PVC pipes, then watched as their truck pulled into an empty lot in Rotunda West and later left with an empty trailer. The owner of the company employing the two men told investigators they were supposed to take those pipes to the county's transfer station for disposal. An iconic restaurant on the Sun Coast is closing, but not for good. The Linger Lodge restaurant in Manatee County is closing for maintenance and renovation work. The restaurant sits on the banks of the Braden River and is known for its unusual stuffed animal displays. The new owners plan to install a new roof, handicap accessible restrooms, and upgrade electrical wiring and plumbing. The restaurant is expected to reopen sometime in October. Time now to head over to the kitchen where our guest today, executive pastry chef Lindsay McDonald, joins us today from Jack Dusty's at the Ritz Carlton. So great to have you back in our kitchen, Lindsay, where you always create something fun and delicious. What's on the menu today? Well, today, in sticking with our summer theme, we are doing stuffed donuts. And we've got cheesecake and chocolate and strawberry shortcake and all sorts of fun things to give you some good ideas as we finish out the summer and start school in two weeks. You had me at stuffed donuts, <laughs> Lindsay. We'll be right back with this. Thank you. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. 
Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. ABC 7, your official Florida lottery station for the Sun Coast. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC 7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Beautiful shot here from Tower Camp showing a few clouds way out in the distance there. We do have some showers in progress, but that's really not a threat to land. We will eventually develop a southwest wind, but uh, I don't think that'll uh, bring any of those showers too close to shore. Maybe tomorrow morning might have a shower or two around near the coast as we can get a persistent southwesterly wind flow. But for today, we're okay. 87 degrees, the current air temperature, probably top it off today about another four degrees warmer than that. Dew point is at 71. That makes it feel pretty comfortable for this time of year. Normally we'd have a dew point in the mid 70s in August, right? So uh, that feels pretty good actually. Calm winds out there right now. Watch those winds shift around to the southwest. 85 degrees in Wachula and Arcadia and Mayaka at 84. We're looking at 86 degrees in Parrish, Brainton at 87. So Sarasota, Venice 85 in Inglewood, 86 degrees in Punta Gorda. Across the region, our weather is still impacted by Emily, though indirectly this time. Emily continues on a trek that takes it further and further away from the coast of Florida as it lifts out into the open waters of the Atlantic. It really becomes a threat to no one. It's going to be absorbed by upper level winds and eventually just wash out. It's already starting to be stretched by those upper level winds. However, what it did do is draw down some drier air, and it's that drier weather that drives our weather forecast for today. The dry air is going to kind of keep those showers down to the south of us, where the dry air has not yet really penetrated. There's a nice line of showers set up down there, and certainly some flooding rain is still possible in the southern tip of the state. And some pretty good downpours anticipated there. And that line kind of stretches way out into Gulf waters, so that could see a fairly decent uh, conveyor of moisture down there for the next six, seven hours or so. Uh, showers out in Gulf waters, all part of a larger area of uh, upper level low pressure that uh, could eventually bring us a little bit more moisture as the winds start to shift more to the southeast with time as high pressure builds in from the south. But right now we get to enjoy this dry air indicated by the tan contours that's over us. I think as we head in tomorrow, we'll see more of that moisture begin to head our way. The dry air right now circling around the circulation that's left over from Emily gets replaced as high pressure builds in down from the south and from the east. That brings up more humidity and brings us a chance at seeing a few more showers around as we increase that humidity, kind of tap into this trough of moisture that's out here in the uh, Gulf waters. So dry air moves in. We get this wind shift late in the day out of the southwest, and we get better rain chances tomorrow, significantly better rain chances tomorrow, actually. 
Uh, watch the RPM computer model. We'll put it into motion this evening. We'll have a few showers around, not many, just a few, riding on that sea breeze and the southwesterly wind. And then tomorrow, we'll kind of encourage more shower formation. And then I think even probably by Thursday, we'll start to see a few showers near the coast in the morning as well. So kind of a change coming up in the uh, near term. For today, we'll go with a daytime high of 91, a little bit more cloud cover around tomorrow, I think, and better chances of rain, mostly still in inland areas. Same thing on Thursday. And then over the weekend, I think we're going to return to that standard kind of afternoon showers and thunderstorms building inland and kind of drifting back to the coast as they tend to die out. Scott? Okay, John, thank you. In health news, an interesting study you may have been thinking twice about uh, before blowing out your birthday candles. Apparently, it spreads a lot of germs. So to test this, researchers slathered icing on two fake birthday cakes and then had people blow out the candles on one of them. They found blowing on the candles increased the amount of bacteria on that cake by 1,400%. The study appears in the Journal of Food Research. It seems the Mediterranean diet really works, but only for a privileged few. According to a study in an Italian clinical research institute, the Mediterranean diet appears to only help the educated and wealthy. Researchers found no benefits for the group that had low incomes and schooling. Those involved with the data say one possible reason for this could be people with more money buy higher quality foods. The Mediterranean diet includes plant-based foods, nuts, fish, and poultry, and is a good way to reduce heart issues. Here at home, more than a dozen Suncoast nurses will be receiving financial help towards their education. This afternoon, 17 nurses will be awarded $140,000 in scholarships from the Suncoast Nursing Action Coalition. Those scholarships will help RNs retain their bachelor's and doctorate degrees in the nursing field, as well as boost nursing instructors in the Sarasota, Charlotte, Manatee, and DeSoto County regions. It's funded by community donors. Still to come in your Suncoast news, a rare solar occurrence that will turn half the country dark in the middle of the day. But first, redemption for an infamous Chicago Cubs fan, his story. Coming up next in sports. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice, choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Being the caregiver for my husband is truly a blessing, but sometimes it's easy to lose a part of myself. To be my best, for him and for me, it's important to have time to be able to recharge. When I called Tidewell Hospice, they gave me the chance to do just that. They helped me find the time to care for myself, all the while with the peace of mind of knowing my husband is in the very best hands. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School, serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. Attention, Royal Seas Cruises has just announced their deal of the day, a $99 Caribbean cruise for two people. This amazing cruise deal to the Bahamas is only available to the first 500 callers who register in your area today. So get ready to write down this number and act fast. We know that the best type of traveler is a repeat guest. So we're offering this $99 Caribbean cruise to prove it. That's $99 per couple, including your stateroom, all your delicious meals, full spa, live entertainment, three kids clubs and more. Come see why we were voted one of the top 10 best overall cruises by Cruise Critic. We're so sure you'll enjoy yourself and become a repeat customer that you're getting this deal of the day for the unbelievable low price of just $99 per couple. But you've got to act fast. Pick up the phone and be one of the first 500 callers to take the Caribbean cruise of a lifetime for just $99 per couple. Call right now or log on to RoyalCruiseNow.com. Call 800-906-0489. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah, yeah. ABC 7 News at 7 weeknights. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice, choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. 
Another NFL veteran is walking away from the game. Jacksonville Jaguars left tackle. Brandon Albert is retiring after nine seasons and two Pro Bowls. Albert is the fifth NFL player to retire in the past week, following New England defensive end Rob Ninkovich, Baltimore offensive lineman John Urschel, Patriots receiver Andrew Hawkins, and Denver safety David Burton Jr. NFL training camps have been open for less than a week now, and Tom Brady is already on top of the league. The Patriots quarterback ranking number one in merchandise sales in a list compiled by the NFL Players Union. The list is based on the total sales of officially licensed NFL merchandise from March to May. Dallas Cowboys running back Ezekiel Elliott ranked number two. Dallas QB Dak Prescott was number three. And Seattle quarterback Russell Wilson rounded out the top five. In baseball, the New York Yankees still lead the American League East by a half game over the Boston Red Sox. The Yankees picked up their seventh win in eight games last night against the Detroit Tigers. Aaron Judge hitting his 34th homer of the season. The back Luis Severino, who struck out eight. He held Detroit to a run and four hits over five innings. Final score, Yankees win it 7-3. to three. The American League's best team, the Houston Astros, rushing up the Tampa Bay Rays last night. Starting pitcher Alex Cobb had a very rough night, giving up eight runs. One bright spot for the Rays was Corey Dickerson. He hit a pair of home runs. The Rays need him to get going again. But it was all Astros. Houston winning 14-7. to seven. Same two teams will play again tonight in Houston. A Chicago Cubs fan blamed for one of the most notorious incidents in baseball history is finally being forgiven. Steve Bartman playing a role in the team's 2003 playoff meltdown. But the Cubs are making it up to him now in a very big way. ABC's T.J. Holmes has the story. One of the most infamous fan interferences in sports history. And leaping up, Alou cannot make the play. And Moises is unhappy with the fans. The Chicago Cubs were just one inning away from going to the 2003 World Series when fan Steve Bartman reached out for this foul ball, knocking it away from the Cubs outfielder Moises Alou, opening the door for the Marlins to come back, claim victory, and keep the then-cursed Cubs from going to the World Series. If a fan just gets his hand out of the way, Moises makes the catch. Bartman was vilified by Cubs fans. You idiot! And has stayed out of the public eye since that fateful night. How can a fan not realize that your left fielder it's your is team. right there? You should have the common sense and to back off from that. But after a 108-year drought... And the Cubs have finally won it all! The Cubs won the World Series last November. And on Monday, Bartman received a Cubs World Series ring from the team. The Cubs said, while no gesture can fully lift the public burden he has endured for more than a decade, we felt it was important Steve knows he has been and continues to be fully embraced by this organization. Bartman was grateful for the gift, writing, I am relieved and hopeful that the saga of the 2003 foul ball incident surrounding my family and me is finally over. That was T.J. Holmes reporting. Great move by the Cubs there. Meanwhile, the Tampa Bay Lightning players and staff are honoring a young fan from Sarasota. Sarasota Christian School senior Tony Colton passed away Sunday after his six-year battle with cancer. Colton was a lifelong Lightning fan, even getting the chance to play with some of the members of the team. Winger Ryan Callahan tweeting, Tony was a special kid. He will be greatly missed. And center Tyler Johnson posting, Tony was a true inspiration and friend. The amount of courage you showed is incredible. Time to get back to the kitchen. John is there with our guest today, executive pastry chef Lindsay McDonald from Jack Dusty's at the Ritz Carlton. It looks delicious already. Very happy man today. Very happy man. This looks great. Chef Lindsay, always a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure to be here. <laughs> we have too much fun. We shouldn't be allowed to do we, I know. We shouldn't allow it. <laughs> uh, what kind of good stuff are you cooking up? Well, I know what you're cooking up. Tell the folks at home what you're, what you're making today. Okay, so today I made some homemade donuts this morning. Oh, I can't believe that. And you just made donuts. I, you, you know, you just wake up and make donuts some days. That's but you amazing. don't have to make them from scratch. You can, for this particular project, you can absolutely go out and purchase them. I know some days even I do that. You know, are I don't like to admit it. donuts hard to make? Donuts are not hard to make. Really? It's no harder than bread. You mix up a dough, you let it sit at room temperature, uh, you roll it out, cut it just like a cookie, let them rise again. The hard part about making a donut at home is frying because not everybody likes sure. a big vat of hot oil. I know with kids, I don't necessarily like it sitting on my stove. Okay, well, I, so. I, 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 want, I don't want to take up a lot of your time. So <laughs> no I, worries. Well, we have to start. If you were to make homemade donuts, yes. you need to glaze them first. Right. So I've got them on this nice screen, and it's way mm -hmm. easier to glaze donuts than you think. 
think. You okay. have this beautiful skin that you see when you purchase a glazed donut. It's just powdered sugar, water, a little bit of butter, vanilla, and then I put maple syrup in mine just because I like it. Why not? You can do this if, when the donut's warm or oh a little bit cooled really? off. Oh. Now it looks like a lot, but what's going to happen is it's going to all drip right off of there and uh -huh. it'll come out looking just like these with oh. the nice thin glaze. Yes? If you add right. a little cocoa powder, you end up with a chocolate Shall glaze. Shall I go for this that. one? Absolutely. Okay. I know you're a chocolate guy, I so am. you've got to do the chocolate portion. We're just going to glaze these donuts nice yes, and full. This is not I'm the time about. to be shy. Okay, so just start to finish. How long do you have to allot to make donuts? How much Start time? to finish about two hours. Uh, really? What That's I do bad. to cheat the morning of, yes. on my days off, I'm not getting up. So I'll make the donuts, cut them out, and oh. put them in the refrigerator. <laughs> put them in the refrigerator so in the morning all I have to do is pull them out, let them sit on the counter, and when they're ready, I fry them off. Do you Glaze got another them? spoon? <laughs> no, I have I'm another spoon. Uh, <laughs> You're terrible. I know. So after these sit about, it takes about an hour for the glaze to dry. They're going to come out looking like this. So you can touch them. It's still a little sticky, but it's not terrible. Now we stuff them. And we've got lots of fun things to stuff them with. Okay. The recipe on the website is for strawberry shortcake donut. That one's really easy. You just make some whipped Wait, cream. Hold on. I covered this. Oh, you covered it yes. up. He was afraid. Okay. Make some whipped cream. And this is not the time to be shy. This gives you a little room for creativity. Filling it with whipped cream. And these strawberries, there's just a little bit of sugar tossed on top of them to get the juice out. Load it on. And you give it a little hat with the other half of the donut. I cannot tell you how good that looks. And easy. Oh, my goodness. Now, there are some variations. Yes. This is cream cheese and heavy cream with a little sugar. And it makes a beautiful cheesecake filling. I bet it does. So there's nothing better than a strawberry cheesecake uh, donut. This is this is this uh, is my thing right here. You know, just, yes, please. Just have to make sure that I did this right. Oh, Same oh, thing loaded Lord. on. And this mm. one's for you. Mm -hmm. I brought some dark chocolate ganache. All right. So if you're wanting to be really, really decadent, you know, like I said, school's How'd you do coming this? back. Well, you're, you're you didn't cut the strong. bottom off this one, did I you? I did. You're tricking me. You're, you have to have strong hands. You can cheat a little you and come bit. halfway down. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I am no pastry I'll, chef. I'll start it for you, <laughs> and you can finish it off. Do you want to add some cheesecake into your dark chocolate? Of course, and do I a do. Double filled. Yes. That's important. This, I'm not going to be able to. You're do this, doing am this I? at home. Nobody oh, has yeah, to know one. how many fillings you put in your donut. Oh, my gosh, this looks so good. The wow. hard part about these is you look at them and you genuinely convince yourself you could pick it up and eat it. That's a bad idea. Really? <laughs> this is definitely a nice You're going to make a mess of yourself. Uh, You'll be wearing <laughs> yes, half of it. Yes, I know I would. Uh, my kids still think they can. And I do not have an unspotted tie. <laughs> no. Well, you wore a red one today, so it would help with some of it. That's right? true. Now, the recipe for this is on our website, mysuncoast.com. You go on there, click on the dining link button. It'll take you right there. All the information you need. Chef Lindsay, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Let me cut yours for easy access. Oh, that sounds good. This looks outstanding. All right. There you go. We'll be right back because I got business. <laughs> for your plumbing. Electrical or air conditioning and services is qualified and service calls are free and services.com a n d services.com Today everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Predoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Predoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. 
Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. Download ABC7's all-new official Suncoast weather app onto all your devices so you can stay informed wherever you go. With our full-featured all-new weather app, you can get weather alerts, interactive radar maps, current conditions, 10-day forecasts, traffic maps, and weather video from ABC7, all at your fingertips. And it's free. ABC 7's all new official Suncoast weather app. Sponsored by Mr. Sparky. Just search Suncoast WX in the App Store and download yours today. From a baby's first steps to walking your daughter down the aisle, so many of life's precious moments are spent on our feet. And every step you take contributes to a healthier heart. By walking briskly for just 30 minutes a day, you can lower your risk for heart disease and stroke. So join us and take the first step to a healthier, longer life. The American Heart Association. Life. Life is why. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free. Services.com. Services.com. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Sun Coast News. We're here for you. Welcome back. Topping our news this half hour Sarasota police charging a man with manslaughter after they say he accidentally shot and killed his sister. This happened Sunday afternoon at a home on Arlington Street in Sarasota. Police say 20-year-old Leticia Cortez was sitting at a kitchen table when her brother, 19-year-old Daniel Cortez Reyes, pulled out a semi-automatic handgun. He told investigators he pulled out the gun's magazine, put it back in, and the gun went off. The bullet hit his sister, who later died at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. Two arrests in Sarasota County involving men attacking women. In Venice, the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office arresting 35-year-old Paul Thompson. He's accused of getting into a verbal altercation with a woman and strangling her while she was holding her four-month-old child. The victim didn't have any visible injuries, but investigators say he came back and then punched her in the eye. He's charged with battery by strangulation. In Northport, a man is arrested for pushing his knee into a woman's throat. Police say 40-year-old Christopher Barnhart got into an argument with a woman over a cell phone Sunday night. The woman told investigators she was able to bite his leg and get away. Barnhart is also charged with battery by strangulation. Happening tonight, Bradenton Police will be in area neighborhoods talking about crime prevention. The department hosting its annual National Night Out. The chief of police will be joining the mayor and other officers in West Bradenton Crime Watch to talk about or talk with neighbors and show their appreciation the neighborhood watchers and the work they do to keep the community safe. That event begins tonight at 7 o'clock. In other news, a bizarre case in North Carolina where a father and daughter are on trial, trial for murder. 67-year-old Tom Martins and his 33-year-old daughter are on trial for second-degree murder and the death of the woman's husband. In 2015, the pair allegedly killed Jason Corbett by hitting him over the head repeatedly with a baseball bat. Martins claims it was self-defense and that his son-in-law was trying to kill his daughter. Martins is a former FBI agent. Developing in California, a search is underway for two missing hikers. 20-year-old Rachel Wynn and 21-year-old Joseph Orbeso disappeared early Friday morning at Joshua Tree National Park in California. Police say their belongings were still in their hotel room. Their vehicle has also been recovered. Trackers believe the two were headed north into a canyon. As far as resources, we've thrown everything that we can uh, uh, to find these two young people. We have no idea what their intentions were, what their plans were, how long they were going to be here. The couple's family say the two are experienced hikers. They were to celebrate Rachel's birthday. Park rangers do not suspect any foul play. Here at home, no more sandbags are being handed out in Sarasota County after reviewing yesterday's rainfall from Tropical Storm Emily. County deciding the sandbags were not needed for any residents who were concerned about flooding. Later this month, darkness will sweep across the United States in the middle of the day. On August 21st, 14 states across the country will experience a total eclipse of the sun. That means the moon will completely cover the sun from Oregon to South Carolina, 
People outside of the eclipse, such as here in Florida, will be able to see a partial eclipse. The last solar eclipse to sweep across the whole country 99 years ago. This is one you want to catch, and no one is more excited about it than the man next to me now. <laughs> you are actually Can't going to, you're going to travel to a part of the country where you can see that total eclipse. Yes, we're going to South Carolina. That's awesome. Yeah, oh, we're looking forward to it. We are really excited. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we're going to be citizen scientists, too. You know, we're going to take uh, data measurements and oh, uh, send them to NASA along with, you know, tens of thousands of other people, hey. no doubt, yeah. and hopefully they can make some good use of it. Uh, so it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. And, you know, you'll get a, a, a look at it here, too, in Sarasota, right. about 80% coverage here. Uh, and Which is uh, significant. Yeah. It's significant. Uh, yeah. People ask me what it's like. Well, you'll notice uh, it cooling off a little bit around here, a couple of degrees. It'll, uh, the temperatures will cool, and it'll be kind of like you'll go from, well, depending on what the sky conditions are like, it'll go from a clear sky to kind of an overcast, cloudy sky is what it'll kind of right. be sensibly feel like. Um, if you're right in the eclipse itself and you're in the totality, then you're going to see uh, it's going to be like uh, just after sunset. You know, wow. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be incredible. That's neat. Uh, but yeah, everybody gets a little taste of it. And a lot of a lot of kids, I'm sure, will be messing around with some science yeah. experiments yeah. in school as well. We have today lots of sunshine out there. I really hope that the eclipse happens on a day like today. <laughs> I really hope so. A uh, lot of blue sky out there, only a few fair weather clouds. It is absolutely gorgeous out there. Punta Gorda Cam put into motion shows. Well, maybe a few more clouds looking off to the south. That is true. There is some out in Gulf waters activity far removed from us. You can see those way out there in the Gulf, but that's really not going to be a bother to us. We also have a lot of cloud cover down to the south because of some activity there, old troughiness left over from Emily. We have about a 20% chance of a shower today. That's about it. Mostly inland with a daytime high in the low 90s. Complete forecast coming up in a few. Scott. Thank you, John. A follow up this afternoon on the controversy surrounding a new Princess Diana documentary. It includes secret tapes never shown in Britain. Her friends and family are now trying to block the broadcast. ABC's Deborah Roberts has more. Just six days before the debut of the British Channel 4 documentary Diana, in her own words, friends of the late princess speaking out against its release, saying the personal tapes in the film are a betrayal of Diana's privacy. The footage seen here in the trailer includes sessions Diana had with her voice coach Peter Settlin in 1992. The recordings meant for Diana to watch and work on her public speaking are more like therapy sessions of her private thoughts. I should never play the phone, I did never play the phone. She went to the Queen um, explaining all of the trouble she had with her husband and the Queen just shrugged her shoulders and basically told her to get on with it. When the tapes were first unearthed after Diana's death, her brother Charles Spencer claimed they belonged to the family. But after a long legal dispute, they were returned to Settlin in 2004. That same year, excerpts were aired in the States but never shown in the UK. Settlin's attorney defending the release of the tapes on Monday to the BBC. The fact is that after Diana's death, the claim to privacy actually fails because the police looked at them. The Spencer family looked at them, presumably, and so what was private to Diana was actually lost in the process. The tapes putting a spotlight on the cracks in Diana's marriage to Prince Charles. The princess even pointing to this moment from their engagement interview she called traumatizing. I, I'm amazed that she's uh, been brave enough to take me on. <laughs> and I suppose in love. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. <laughs> I was brought up and said that, you know, when you've got engaged with someone, you love them. Channel 4 defending their documentary, telling ABC News the subjects in the film are a matter of public record and provide a unique insight into the preparations Diana undertook to gain a public voice and tell her own personal story. That's Deborah Roberts reporting. The documentary airs Sunday in the UK and then August 14th on the National Geographic Channel. In consumer news today, a mid-flight scare when an overheated mobile phone battery sparks a fire on a flight with more than 200 people on board. The incident happening Sunday. Crew aboard a Sri Lankan Airlines jet noticed smoke from an overhead bin shortly after meal service. Investigators discovering the source of the smoke was a lithium-ion battery pack. The FAA is conducting new tests on lithium-ion batteries which can smoke and explode. You're getting more and more lithium iron batteries being carried on airplanes because people's personal devices need to be powered by these, by these small uh, batteries that, that hold a good charge. 
The crew managed to put the fire out. No one was injured. So far this year, the FAA has reported at least 18 incidents involving those lithium-ion batteries on airplanes or in airports. Frontier Airlines is adding new destinations and routes. The airline adding 21 new destinations in its network. The three new cities joining Frontier's route map are Buffalo, Charleston, South Carolina, and Pensacola. Among the destinations that will see a big bump in service are Austin, Texas, Cincinnati, Denver, Miami, Orlando, and Long Island, New York. And it's a passenger jet that can fire rockets into space. Virgin Orbit debuting its Cosmic Girl aircraft in California. The company made modifications to the Boeing 747 uh, that will allow it to carry a launcher, one space rocket under one of its wings to conduct mission tests. The rocket could be ready as soon as next year. The company started offering tickets to people to travel to outer space last year. When we come back, John will have another look at our forecast for the rest of the work week. And then it's a club that dedicates itself to capturing the beauty of the Sun Coast through the lens of a camera. We'll be right back with a place we call home. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice, choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud too. Going on now. For every two windows you buy, get one more free. Call today. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has answered calls for recovery and treatment 24-7, 365 days a year. If you're depressed, drinking, using drugs, or taking pills, call now and talk to someone who cares. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Most insurance covers substance abuse. You can get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven general recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call 800-622-1941. 800-622-1941. Start your day with a new Good Morning Suncoast team. Weekday starting at 5 a.m. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice, choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. We're looking at uh, some very mild temperatures outside, warm at 87 degrees, but a dew point value that's low enough to make it feel okay, comfortable for summertime, for August. This is pretty good, a dew point of 71. Usually we'd have a dew point in the mid 70s, so um, nah, I'm not complaining about 71. Winds are calm right now, plenty of sunshine out there, and no reason to think that our temperatures won't boost up to about 90, 91 degrees for a daytime high. Now, the winds will not be calm all afternoon long. They're going to shift around to the southwest today, and that's going to help bring the moisture back into the picture eventually over the next 24 hours or so. Temperatures across the region, 86 degrees in Wachula, Mayaca, Arcadia, Northport at 88, Venice at 88, 85 degrees in Inglewood, 83, Longboat Key, 87 degrees in Bradenton. It's nice out there, most everywhere. Of course, along the beach will be the place to be a little bit later on as those winds come out of the southwest. There's what's left of Emily. Low pressure area now scooting off into the open Atlantic. Doesn't have much of a chance of any kind of redevelopment, though it may possibly strengthen a little bit, although I doubt it. It's starting to elongate and form. It's starting to be absorbed by upper level winds, so it doesn't have much of a chance. As it moves out into the open waters of the Atlantic, of course, it bothers no one. It'll be well north of Bermuda. We're looking at quiet conditions around here. We will put in a slight chance at a shower, though, about a 20% chance. Mostly inland today is where they'll form. We may be seeing one start to form right now by the bend in 75. 
Showers down to the south, Fort Myers. If you're heading south now to go across Alligator Alley, you're going to kind of be plagued with a rainy drive. Once you get on Alligator Alley, there's going to be a lot of rain shower activity down there, and it's going to be persistent, I think, throughout the day. This line of showers trails way out into Gulf waters. This trough of low pressure kind of left over and part of the track of Emily. It's brought down some drier air in the kind of the, the shear zone, the, the, the changeover from that dry air to the moist air south is what you're seeing in that line of clouds. And that line of clouds will be not moving all that much today. Dry air from the north is what we're enjoying or have been enjoying. Now winds are kind of quiet as we start to see high pressure build from the south and our winds shift out of the southwest. That'll draw back moisture across the region and eventually encourage the formation of some showers, some more showers around by tomorrow. Now for today, we'll watch that dry air continuing to provide us with lower than average rain chances for August. And the winds shifting late in the day give us better chances of rainfall tomorrow. Those are the weather highlights that should just about carry us through the rest of the week. Actually, that southwesterly wind flow taking some of the showers from Gulf waters and pushing them inland as we head into tomorrow. Our rain chances go up a little bit. Then on Thursday, I think our rain chances really go up significantly as we see moisture begin to rise up. And we'll even get some morning showers around, I think. As far as the satellite view of the tropics goes, well, good news here. The one area we thought we might see develop has basically lost its chance to do that. It's not going to happen. And the rest of these little tropical waves don't show much sign of development either. So we're kind of in a period where we're looking at some pretty nice weather, tropically speaking. Southwest wind develops. That gives you a light chop boaters. Good day for boating. And the extended range forecast features pretty typical rain chances as we head into the weekend. Back to you, Scott. John, thank you. A group here on the Sun Coast finds joy and a sense of purpose thanks to the Lakewood Ranch Digital Photography Club. ABC 7's Linda Carson has more on why this club helps make our area a place we call home. Many members say the Lakewood Ranch Digital Photography Club is one of the main things that makes life here on the Sun Coast great. It started as five people around the table sharing just the pictures um, over about, about 10 years ago, and it's now moved to almost 300 photographers who are avid photographers. We take total beginners right through to professionals. The club focuses on education. There's a major speaker at each meeting. It can be a national speaker. We've had people like Scott Kelby, who's a, a god in photography. Uh, you get people who are local photographers as well. And we try to uh, teach people different techniques. They also hold monthly photography competitions and help out in the community. We do volunteer work at the Manatee Pet Shelter. So those photos then are used on their website to show the public nicer photos of the dogs that are available for adoption. And they go on photography field trips. We've been to Selby Garden. That's a favorite place um, for macro photographers and our, our you know flowers and things like that. We've been to the beach. We've done beach photography. Um, we've been to Ybor City several times. We've been up to Florida Polytech. They even visited ABC7. Strong friendships develop among members and skills grow by leaps and bounds. Some of our members who came to us as beginners now are doing art shows and, and craft shows and things like that. Um, some people have become professional photographers, wedding photographers. Some people have set up little studios in their home and, and you know, pursued more of the portrait photography. And this new passion can be life-changing. Tom spent 25 years as a ship's captain. I retired a couple years ago in August, and that Christmas I bought myself a, a digital camera and got involved in photography. Joined the club, and it's really been a wonderful experience. Bill Mills also joined the club after retirement. I've actually transformed my life. I now do professional photography. And it can help make this a great place to call home. I love Sarasota to begin with, but really being involved with the club and Lakewood Ranch, it, it has become a better place uh, for home. The Lakewood Ranch Digital Photography Club welcomes new members. They meet every third Thursday. And for more information, you can go to their Facebook page or their website. Linda Carson, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, Linda, thank you. Coming up, the incident that has a popular author apologizing for her latest criticism of President Trump and why MTV is changing the name of its moon man.
That's next in entertainment news. So many possibilities worth exploring. Minnesota flooring. And for a limited time, Minnesota Flooring is offering you unbelievable pricing on tile and laminate. Porcelain tile, only $1.59. Ceramic tile, 99 cents. And 16 by 16 tile, $1.19. Laminate flooring is only 99 cents. But these prices won't last. Don't miss out on these great deals. Hurry into Minnesota Flooring today. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe ten thousand dollars or more upon payment of your new lower balance your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free my family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20 percent interest there's no fees until you see results so call now make one monthly program payment and free up your cash resolve your debt call 800-685-6422 800-685-6422 Consumer Cellular makes it easy to stay in touch with family and stay within our budget. Now our cell phone bill is only a fraction of what it used to be. Our average customers get everything they need for about $25 a month, and plans start at only $10 a month with no contracts. Consumer Cellular has a great choice of phones. Check out my new one. I picked this simple phone. I use my son's old smartphone. Kept my number, too. Consumer Cellular has been an approved AARP provider since 2008, and members get exclusive discounts. It's a good thing Consumer Cellular is always there, because sometimes I need a little help. Sometimes. We're proud to have received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service among non-contract wireless providers. Over the years, we've seen a lot of change. We actually use change. Luckily, there are some things we can still afford. Like Consumer Cellular. Stop paying too much for wireless service. Switch now and for a limited time, get a $20 credit on any new line of service. Call 1-800-920-3084. Go online or visit a Target store today. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Chris Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling is apologizing about tweets she made about President Trump. Rowling called the president horrible after seeing footage of him appearing to ignore a child's outstretched hand during a White House event last week. But the boy's mother says President Trump did not ignore her son and he wasn't even trying to shake his hand. Rowling apologized, saying she was projected by her sensitivity for disabled people. The child was in the wheelchair. HBO is the target of cyber criminals, the company confirming that hackers may have stolen things from some of its hit TV shows. HBO is not saying what was taken, but Entertainment Weekly says it got an email from the hackers offering up what might be the script to next week's Game of Thrones episode and upcoming episodes of Ballers and a new show called Room 104, which debuts later this year. HBO says it's working with law enforcement on the investigation. MTV is changing the name of one of its iconic symbols. The Moon Man will now be called a Moon Person. MTV's president says it was never clear whether or not there was a man under the suit. He says it could be a woman or even a transgender. The move comes after MTV eliminated gender-specific categories from its award show. Carol Burnett is making her way back into the television scene. The 84-year-old comedy icon will star in a new unscripted comedy series titled A Little Help with Carol Burnett. It will feature everyday people presenting their problems to a panel of children shamelessly dishing out advice. Burnett said she's still a kid at heart 
and is excited about this new venture. The series premieres next year on Netflix. And not a lot of things can shock a newsroom, except maybe when you find a snake at your desk. It was a carpet python which slivered onto the desk of a camera person in Australia. The reporter who filmed it says there was plenty of screaming, mostly from the woman who found it. But fortunately, the program manager at the station had experience handling snakes. Look how calm she is. That snake is not all that happy. She uh, used a coat hanger to pull it out and then put it into a bag and then released it into the bushes right outside the newsroom where they all hope it stays from now on. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've had snakes brought in by, you know, bush gardens and things yes, here. Yes, we have. But not wild snakes that just found a way in. It's the outback, I guess. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she was very cool about the whole Wasn't thing, she? though. Yeah. yeah. Just handled that, you know, just like it was nothing. I, I don't see that happening in our newsroom. Mm -hmm. like carpet snake. I never heard running. of a carpet snake. Yeah, carpet python. Carpet python. Let's yeah. hope I never see one in person. <laughs> A little bit of uh, sunshine, maybe an isolated shower tomorrow. Better chances of rainfall. Enjoy the sunny, dry weather. We, we deserve it. Yep. John, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day ahead. We'll see you again at 5 o'clock.